I just realized nobody could hear me on the, the actual platform before, but you should be able to hear me now. Um, welcome. welcome. Yes, if you're going to be joining us here on Quizando, we're going live at this minute. And uh, yeah, we have a bit of a fun little quiz. So I'll be explaining the rules very shortly, but do join in. Come into Quizando.com. You might miss a couple of questions, but why not? You still have a chance to win as many. Holy cow. We've got a good international audience today. So, we have a wonderful international audience today. Hello, guys. How you doing? Um, that was a little bit of fun chat. Hello, Jam Sam. Hello, Kemic. Hello, Miles. Hello. We have, like, England. So, England, Hungary, uh, Slovakia. Um, where else do we have representing? Malta. Yes, Malta, Romania. Uh, who, uh, America, we know. We have Washington representing here. Anyone else? USA. Yes, the, the game is soon going to be in Slovenia. It, this is lots of fun. So we have people from all around the world. We've joined together in the most virtual of virtual pub quizzes um, from Maribor, Slovenia as well. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, we have 30 questions in our pool. I think we have somewhere close to... Uh, 15 or 20 players. We'll, we'll find out very shortly, but I hope you all join in and have the fun. We are starting the game. We're going to start the game. We have a three-round quiz. Um, this three rounds. I don't know what the rounds are. We're going to find out as we go along. First round is about to start now. The way it works is you need to answer the question as quickly as possible. That is the key. The faster you answer, more points you get. More points you get, higher up the leaderboard you go. Each round has a winner, but you don't win any financial prizes or anything for that. That's just like, you know, you know, kudos to you. Um, and uh, then the overall winner is compiled from the results of the three rounds. If you don't have any sound, um, which you should have sound, there is a sound button somewhere here. Just click that. No sound, no questions, no whiz. Huh? Hold on. Kamek, you can't hear me. So wait, okay. If you can't hear me, refresh. Thank you, American idiot. Um, so yes, um, if you can't hear me, just refresh the thing. What's great about this now is you can actually leave the room and come back in. It's, it's uh, what's it called? Yeah, if it's glitching on you, it could be your internet connection, could be something of the sort. We should be quite stable today. Um, and we're rebroadcasting, so we'll find out. Okay, so let's start with the first question. All right, guys. So here we go. First question coming up right now. And the first question in the first round of this Wednesday Night Live is, oh, it's February history. So there we are. So we're going to be talking about history from the month of February. So we're going to find out facts which are all February related. And we'll start with this first one, which is coming up right now. Which famous biologist was born in Shrewsbury, England on the 12th February, 1809? Was it Alfred, Wa Alfred Russell Wallace, Robert Brown, Francis Creek, or Charles Darwin? Who was born on the 12th February, 1809? I would go for Charles Darwin because he's the only one I recognize. I don't have a good um, history side to my, my like a, a whole line of biologists. But yes, Charles Darwin was the answer there. And what happened in that first question? Well... Chet jumped onto that, as their name says, and jumped all the way up into first place. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Matt, Nick Perot, Miles, Wildbuyer. Guys, good first question there. Um, yep, yeah, the leaderboard is obviously the same. So we'll skip right into the second question in our February history quiz, uh, or f history round in this quiz. So next question coming up is this. On the 11th of February, which nation celebrates... It's 660 BC found, founding, Thailand, France, Australia, or Japan. On 11th February, which nation found, celebrates its 660 BC founding? And that is Japan. So Japan was founded in 660 BC. What it was before, I do not know. But it became a nation all those years ago. So congrats, well, if you're from Japan, hey. Happy, J Happy Japan Day. Uh, that quiz, that one there brought uh, Adzip up two places. Bill Bear and Mikkel moving up a couple over there. Wow, Bagger, where are you at? You're not in the top ten. What happened? Lee Sam, welcome to the top ten for the first time. And Mikkel moving up three places into the sixth place. Good stuff. So, how are we doing so far, guys? Uh, let me just see the, the stats over here. So, 13 of you got that correct with three of you thinking it was France and five of you thinking it was Thailand. Good stuff. So how are we doing so far? All good? 
all dandy? Let me know with a quick yes, hi, or thumbs up, or whatever you wish to throw in the chat over there. All good so far? Everybody wants to quiz. All good, all good. History. Yes, this is, this is, this is your, your, your jizz, hey, Nick. Okay, all good. Bill Beer, go Australia. Is that Australia? I think it is. Well, let's go with the next question. As we say, Ascension Island. Ooh, I've never been there. Which Scottish monarch was beheaded on the February the 8th, 1587? Was it James V, Mary I, Robert III, or Malcolm IV? Who was it? It was Mary I. Because obviously you don't behead a man. Um, no, that... <laughs> So just about to say something really sexist, which would have been on all sorts of social media, but I didn't. See, good on me. Um, fantastic stuff there. Very good. Very smooth. And what happened there? So only four of you got that. 14 of you got that one correct with four of you thinking it's something else. But a whole bunch of people who didn't answer that one. But hey, it happens. Let's move on to the next question. Urban Sombrero, Lee Sam, Wellbagger, Matt, Strafe, Nick Perot, G2G6, and Kevin Kostrup. Good stuff. And there were a couple, a whole bunch more. Um, so that's, that's looking good. Let's move on to the next question. Next question coming up right now. In February 1997, the scientists of Roslyn Institute announced they had successfully cloned which species? Was it a pig, a chimpanzee, a rat, or a sheep? February 1997. It was a sheep, if I'm correct. And uh, her name was Dolly. Dolly the sheep um, was cloned uh, over there. And a couple of you knew it. Bill Bear knew that and jumped up a little bit quicker. Jet is just rocking. Keeping on top of the board with 30,882 points. Most of you knew that one. Uh, so very good stuff there. Nassim, Jam Sam, Bobic. They just didn't answer, which it happens. It happens. You hate history. Don't worry. It's not at all going to be history. Uh, yeah, it, it's not not my thing. But um, but history is a good thing because you learn from history and 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 go march history next round. <laughs> it could be. It could be named after Dolly Parton became because it came from a mammary cell. Is that really true, Chris? Because I I would believe you if it. <laughs> <coughs> Dolly Parton apparently is born like my. We share a birthday together, which was like last last week or so. Yeah, I forgot when my birthday was. So moving on. Question four, or, or question four in this round. Uh, in what year was Fidel Castro sworn in as the prime minister of Cuba? Was it 1950, 1959, 1963, or 1967? What year was Fidel Castro sworn in as the prime minister of Cuba? I would go for somewhere around 59, and. See, that's a good, it's an educated guess, because sometimes you can just cut them out and say, okay, when was the missile crisis? It was 52 far, far in advance. But over there, did that stump some of you? Well, I saw a couple of people moving down. Nassim, Mocha's Gentle, well, Beetlejuice. Um, no, Beetlejuice, I think Gentle Bensby. Uh, Bobic, Jam Sam, Macito, Miles Searle, Beetlejuice. And Lisa didn't know that one, but that's fine, that's fine. It's, it's, not, it's not the end of the world over there. Um, but we're doing good so far. Okay, so hands up. How many of you hate history? So like, just write something in the chat. But somewhere near. So I prefer her story. <laughs> I like European. Love it. Okay, we have, we have, we have, okay. Marcus isn't a big fan of history. So I'll just go back to our question writers and I'll say, you know what, sometimes we can pour it. You prefer maths. Well, a maths round might come up. I don't know. We'll find out. History is cool, but I'm very bad at it. The thing is, I like weird history. I like those weird facts about life um, and, and the weird things that, that come out of history. Uh, like, like there, there's one thing, uh, for example, there, there's a name in Malta. Uh, there's a surname in Malta, and this, this comes from history. Uh, the surname Malta, uh, in Malta called Saliba. Um, which uh, is is a very quite a common surname uh, comes from the the fact that uh, basically Salib in Maltese means the cross so, so like the cross that Jesus was hung on and uh, Saliba would if you actually literally translate it would mean her cross now every person who has the surname Saliba actually is a descendant of a knight 
and they're a descendant of a knight because the knights actually couldn't have wives so they would have a child with a woman but they couldn't be the father so it's her cross to bear therefore the child was born as saliba her cross and there you are salibaba <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that, I, it's like those weird little facts of life. Those I love to bits because because uh, that's that's sort of the interesting color which 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 life gives. A descendant of a knight, <laughs> exactly. Yes, there we are. So next question coming up because it forced me to it. Next question is coming up now. In February 1990, South Africa lifted its ban on which political party? Was it COPE? Was it the FF? Was it the ANC? Or was it the UDM? If I remember correctly, it was the ANC. Yes, it was the ANC uh, because it lifted its ban on apartheid in 1990. And that was a glorious day when everybody was very, very happy for the rights of the world. Um, so good stuff. Jet's still hanging in there in top spot uh, with 47,000 points. Right behind right behind Jet, because uh, I don't know if it's a girl or a guy, is 3 to 1 ad zip with 47,400 points. And Bill Bear in third place with 43,770 points. There's still a lot of points to go, so don't worry. If you're at the bottom right now, you can still move up. Uh, Chris, welcome to the top 10 again. This is going to be a lot of fun. So moving on, next question. Here we go. Four questions to go in this round. Next one coming up right now. And the next question is asking this. Which English football legend died on February 1993 at age 51? Was it Bobby Moore? Was it Jimmy Greaves? Was it Bobby Charlton? Or was it Dixie Dean? Which English football legend died in February 1993 at age 51? It was Sir Bobby Moore. Sir Bobby Moore, former Manchester United legend, I think. Let me just check out that. Bobby Moore. I think he was. Um, yes, Sir Bobby Moore... He was a West Ham, sorry, West Ham United player. I knew he played for United somewhere uh, over there. And how many of you knew that? Well, this is going to be the interesting question. 13 of you knew it. A couple of you went for Bobby Charlton and some of you went for Jimmy Greaves. But that's fine. Three questions to go in this round and then we'll take a bit of a break. Next question coming right up now. Asking this, which of these U.S. presidents was born in February? Was it Harry S. Truman, Theodore Roosevelt, George Washington, or Bill Clinton? Which of these U.S. presidents was born in February? I would go for Bill. Was it Bill? Was it Bill? No, it was George. It was the first president of all, Mr. George Washington, and he was born in February. Now, how many of you knew it? That's a better question. We're going to find out right now. I'm expecting the Americans to have known this one because, like, this is something you're taught in class. Urban Sombrero, Lashheads, Wowbagger, Matt, Strafe, Bill Bear, Nick Perot, Muckus, and Kemi Koster, and three more um, over there. Got that one correct. A couple of you got it wrong. It happens. But uh, but some of you thought it was Bill Clinton. See, I would have went for Bill. I would have got that wrong. Never never learned my U.S. history. Um, but good, good stuff. Next question coming straight up now. And this one is asking this. In February 1629, which infamous series of witch trials began? Was it the Ips Ipswich witch trial, witchcraft trial? The trial of the Pendle witches? That I can't even say this. Or the Salem witch trials. I'm going for number four. Salem witch trials uh, began... Uh, in 1692 and ever since Salem has been the town of horror it's, it's you, know, you find the Salem everywhere actually which is quite cool so um how did you do there a couple of you didn't get that one correctly no worries how are we doing helps that it's holiday oh it is I didn't know that um who else knows about this from fallout oh the Salem witch trials any of, any of you gamers in the in the room? Any of you play video games? I've never played Fallout to, to be to, to my my shame. Um, I think I own a couple of them, but I, I, I tend to buy games that I never ever play. Um, and especially then with PS Plus, you sort of like I, I'm a PlayStation gamer. We we prefer <laughs> history from games is accurate. <laughs> Um, no, it isn't. But uh, history from games can be fun. Um, my my daughter was my daughter was watching the Teen Titans recently, and she was telling me all about this episode where Robin was throwing um, boxes of tea off of a boat, and she thought that was history. I mean, my daughter is seven, and she has never heard of the Boston Tea Party, so I got to explain that to her. But um, <laughs> but yeah, oh, Age of Mythology, Age of Empires two, yes, was a great game. Um, it's always being advertised these days. 
Okay, so you guys, you guys seem to be very big into your strategy games over there, which is cool. I, I, I tried like Red Alert too. That's as far as I could get with these strategy games, and that was like a long, long time ago. Cuphead is a good game. What is Cuphead? I don't. Should I search that one live on air? It's, it, it's almost, it's almost make me think of Two Girls One Cup. Cuphead. Let's see what that is. Okay, it's about two guys who play with cups. Porn. <laughs> yes, Scrappy. Um, I, sometimes, sometimes you actually look these things up. But yes, uh, Pornhub is a very addictive game. Uh, it can be. It can be. And there's a reason for that, which I'll explain after this next question. Moving on. Next question coming up right now. And the question is, which romantic poet known for Ode to a Nightingale died of tuberculosis Age 25 on February 1821. Was it Lord Byron, Percy, Shelley, William Blake, or John Keats? Ode to a Nightingale, it was John Keats who did that. And that brings us to the end of this round, and we actually have a winner. Jet, welcome to first place. Wow, you did really, really well there. Uh, congratulations, Jet, on that one. Bill Bear, Wow Bagger, that's one, two, three. You guys had an excellent, excellent, excellent first round. Congratulations, guys. But the game is not over. We still have another two rounds. We still could have a winner. And uh, tell you, you knew that one over there. Um, with some of you just dropping off, which is fine. But we'll find out for the next round. <laughs> Theme about porn films. <laughs> oh, um, to, to be honest, I again, that's that would be a category I'd be rubbish at. I, I, I was that in, I was part of that sort of generation, which. It was hard to get um, films, and you just had the beginnings of the internet clips. So I think I missed that, um, whereas I think a generation before me actually got to enjoy the stories. 2G. <laughs> oh, you never you never know what you're going to hear in a quiz. Uh, may, maybe Leia Gotti should... <laughs> Well, you never know. She will be. She will be back. We uh, we were having a chat last week, something like that. So yeah, she could be back. Did you? Did you, did you guys join in when she had the the quiz on Quizando? Three, two, one. It's perfect. <laughs> oh. <coughs> All right, guys. So let's move on to the next uh, round, which is going to be this. Yes, we miss her. We do miss her indeed. And I'll, I'll send her. I'll send her your, your love. So the next round is literary quotes. So this is for you bookworms out there. These are some quotes for you. Who's it going to be? What's it going to do? Well, we're going to find out right now. First question is coming up. A complete, the wheel of time quote. Death is a light as a feather. Duty is as heavy as a giant. Your purse, a mountain, my sword. Death is as light as a feather, duty heavy as what? A mountain. Yes, that's from The Wheel of Time, Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, if I'm correct, that which will one day be made into a film. And Bill Bear seemed to know that one because he jumped on like that, like a big jumping on thing. And very good. So, how's the leaderboard looking so far? Masito, welcome to the top 10. G2, G6 seems to know that one. Any Robert Jordan fans out there? No mat, no, no mats yet. You never know what's gonna come. Um, nope, not a Robert Jordan fan. Okay. Um, what sort of books do you like, American Idiot? My quizzing head is not on today. It's fine. It's fine. It's a Wednesday. It's midweek. We've had a lot going on. I am a fan of Jordan, Michael Jordan. My, how did I know that was coming, Nick? How did I know that was coming? Yes, Michael Jordan is absolutely awesome. By the way, did you guys did you guys watch the uh, the the last the last dance the Netflix series? Uh, that was absolutely awesome. My I, my my wife was like, "Oh, we're gonna watch a basketball documentary," and then it was like, "I want to play the next episode." That was a, such a great series. If you have not seen it, do do have a uh, a glance at it at Netflix. Netflix. It was absolutely amazing. I'm looking forward to the next uh, next. There's another version of the Last Dance coming out soon. Um, I'm a fan of MJ. He's an owner. What, who, who does he own, Matt? Uh, what, what, what does he? What team does he, is, he, is he on? The Bulls, or the Bobcats. Oh, I didn't know that. The Hornets. Okay, didn't know that. Good on him. Let's go to the next question. Literary quotes. And our first liter next literary quote is: Which of Shakespeare's characters said there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy? 
Ophelia, Polonius, Laertes, or Hamlet? Who said that? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt in your philosophy. And it was good Sir Hamlet, the Danish prince, who is melancholic and questioned everything, even his own existence with his existential questions. So, uh, Bill Bear jumping on that one. Uh, Miles uh, moving up two places over there. G2, G6 moving up two. The top of the table is looking nice and uh, heavy. I mean, it's quite quite dense. There's, uh, what, 4,000 points between everybody over there. So it could, it could go any, anyway. Masito moving up a couple of places. And Lisa, welcome back to the top ten. Moving on to the next question in our literary quiz round. And this next question is asking the following which novel is the famous opening line, Call Me Ishmael, from Tom Sawyer, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The Journey to the Center of the Earth, Around the World in 80 Days, or Moby Dick? Which novel's famous opening line is Call Me Ishmael? And it is Moby Dick, because Ishmael is his name. I forgot his name, actually. Uh, call Me Ishmael. Yes, that is from Obi Moby Dick there. And uh, Bill Bear is still keeping the top place. Steref moving up a couple of places there into second, into third place. And uh, Matt moving into the top ten. Welcome to the top ten, Matt. So, yes, that was Moby Dick. Uh, a couple of you answered Tom Sawyer, which, guys, if you answered Tom Sawyer, and the, it, literally the, the book is called The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, you would think, like, Ishmael's telling the story of Tom Sawyer? I don't know. <laughs> no worries. Call me Starbucks. Oof, you can call me Al. Da, 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 da. Moving on, next question. Insufficient data for meaningful answer is a quote from which author? Ian Banks, Kurt Vogelnut, Isaac Asimov, or Arthur C. Clarke? Insufficient data for meaningful answer is a quote from which author? And if you are into your sci-fi, you would know it's Isaac Asimov, um, the famous science fiction writer. Um, who I actually once read an article of his in Playboy. Yes, you by all this talk tonight, you would actually think I'm like addicted to this stuff. But but I think I bought a total of one magazine of that in my life, and there was actually an article from Isaac Asimov which I did read. Um, so yes, uh, let's see. Most of you knew it, knew it was Isaac Asimov. A little bit of a trick uh, twist there with Arthur T. Clarke, who's another famous writer. I did. I did, American Idiots. I, I, I did read the article. I, I didn't say I didn't do... I, I, I read the article, but I didn't buy it for the article. <laughs> reading. What, what are you reading at the moment, Bentle J? Uh, what book are you reading? We all were... No worries. You know, it's a shame. I heard... I heard I don't, what did they start? Nine Tomorrows. Is that any... Is it good. Is it a, is it good? Will I catch the Netflix version of that soon? That's, that's, that's the better, better thing, because... I have to. I have to say a little bit of an honest truth. Um, I have been reading the same book since 2011, <laughs> and what's worse is now they've made a series of it. So I'm tempted to put down the book and finish watching the series. I'm I'm really bad at re I, I, in the sense. I don't know. I tend to ingest more visually. Um, I've been reading the, the Stand by Stephen King since 2011. I tend to read it on flights and things like that, um, just very slowly and for a very short period. So, like, I'm only halfway through the book. So, I'm tempted just to watch the series. Has anybody caught the series, The Stand? The Stand by Stephen King. No. Yes. Yes. No. No. Okay. Apparently, it's quite good. I, I heard it. I heard it's quite good. Um, the book is made. The book is actually really good. the The book is all about a disease that escapes a lab, believe it or not, and starts killing people with this terrible cold. I mean, you couldn't make this thing up if you tried. Um, you couldn't stand. <laughs> No, I, I, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy the characters. Um, I love Stephen King. No, do check, it, do check it out. It's a long book. Moving on. Next question is being forced upon me. And this question is the following. George Orwell wrote, Perhaps one did not want to be loved so much as to be heard, understood, obeyed, or welcome. Perhaps one did not want to be loved so much, so much as to be heard, understood, obeyed, or welcome. And it was understood. But how many of you knew that question. Well, I think Steref knew that one because it 
boosted him all the way up to the top. Uh, Chris A89 in second place there, and Lashhead's in third. That really shook up the top 10 uh, because 13 of you knew it. And the rest of you didn't. Lashes, Wildbagger, Bentel J, Strafe, Be Gentle Benspy, Lisa, Matt, Chris A89, Mikkel, and four others. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. So we have five questions to go in this round. I am English-speaking people at the top. <laughs> this quiz is Orwellian. <laughs> it is. Because I'm watching you. you. You think the camera's just on me. But see that red light on your computer? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Next question coming up right now. And the next question is as follows. Frederick Douglass said, Once you learn to read, you will be forever focused, content, free, or happy. Once you learn to read, you will forever be focused, content, free, or happy. I would go with free. That sounds like a good quote. Once you learn to read, you will forever be free. And how many of you believe that or at least knew that? Well, Matt knew that, taking him all the way up to second place. What do the rest of you do? Let's see. 20 of you got it as free. Two of you thought it was happy. And some of you just didn't answer, which is okay. Cats at City, welcome to the room. You joined us a little bit, right? Big Wes. Uh, yeah, I am, I am a, bit, I'm a big boy. Um, but yes, uh, once you learn to read, you will forever be free. Or you f will forever be... Uh, I don't know. It's LB Cats Ass. So you're still in it. Yes, it is leaderboard. So you're still in it to win it. So four questions to go. And we got some more quizzing questions coming up. Next one is right here. Which famous poet is misquoted as saying, you cannot find peace by avoiding life? Was it Virginia Woolf, Edgar Allan Poe, Williams Wordworth, or W.B. Yeats? You cannot find peace by avoiding life. And it was Virginia Woolf. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? I am. And yes, there she is. And that left the leaderboard more or less untouched with Jet moving up some places on that. Urban Sombrero and Mikkel jumping into the top 10. Congratulations, guys. Three questions to go. Moving on to the next one right away. And this next question is as follows. Who wrote the famous line, all that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream? Is it Samuel Taylor Coleridge? Is it William Blake? Is it Edric Allan Poe or Percy Basil Shelley? And it is Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe, who we spoke about last week in the quiz. Forevermore, forevermore. Um, Matt, jump in all the way to the top spot there. Congratulations. Lash is moving into the top three. Mikael moving up four places with that one. And uh, Nick Perot, welcome to the top ten once again, good sir. Good, good stuff. We got two questions over here, and I think I think it's looking nice and dandy. I mean, we've got two questions to go. We'll t just take a look at, quickly at the overall leaderboard before we do. So the overall leaderboard still has Jet nice and solid in top spot with uh, 117,000 points. 98,000 points over there to Wildbagger and Mikkel in third place with 97,000 points, 252. Now, you guys can still move up. Bill Bear is over there with 96,000, 95,000 to Strafe. We still got a round to go. We still got a lot of ways to move. But remember, more points you get, more you get closer you get to winning. So let's go to the next question. And this next question is the following. Complete the Stephen King quote, times the thief of memory, virility, vitality, or youth. Times the thief of memory, virility, vitality, or youth. Times the thief of youth. Nope, memory. Time is a thief of memory. I did not know that. I was going to go for youth. As you heard me. And it seemed Chris A., the Stephen King fan there, knew that one, bringing him to the top spot with L.A. Sheds moving up to number two. Uh, ben Beetlejuice, Bentle J1, moving up over there to the sixth place, moving up three places with a couple of you guys sliding down just a bit. Last question to go before we take a short break into the next round. And this is the last one of the round, so who's going to be the winner? Question's coming up now, and it is. The once common phrase, what the Dickens originated from the work of which famous English writer? Ian Fleming, William Shakespeare, Charles Dickens, or Thomas Hardy? The common phrase, what the Dickens, came from which famous English writer's work? And it was William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare, who created so many wonderful words, including the word anchovy. But...
we have a winner. Congratulations, Matt, taking you up two places to the top space, getting it in the last second. You've won the literary quotes round. Bravo, Matt. Uh, Chris Hayes, United in second place, and Lashheads in third. Good stuff, guys. So, after that, 12 of you got that one correct uh, with William Shakespeare. There was a bit of a fake out there with uh, Charles Dickens, with four of you answering that. Some of you answered Tom Hardy, and some of you answered Ing uh, Ian Fleming, which could be. I mean, you could, you could see Bond saying, what the Dickens? Or if it was Sean Connery, what the Dickens? But anyway, um, as chemic means chemist. Okay, so Shakespeare also came up with the phrase household, household words, ironically. He did. Okay. <laughs> so the household word um, no no Shakespeare did come up with a lot of words and I did learn that he came up with the word anchovy and a friend of mine last week was actually questioning um, what did they call anchovy before it was anchovy theoretically he didn't come up with the word because that was a derivative from the Italian word which was in Java but uh, but yeah he transliterated because at the end of the day we know that Shakespeare wasn't a creator he was an awesome thief that's it. That's my thing. Shakespeare did not exist. No, he was, he's just like Satoshi Nakamoto of Bitcoin legend. He was a series of people who hid behind a pseudonym um, over there. Exactly. Okay, guys, that was the second round. How are you feeling after that? Are you ready for round three? Yes. No, maybe. Give me some sort of sign that you're still with me. How are you feeling, Lucky Punk? Only if it's... <laughs> <laughs> yes bring it on paintings ready okay boys and girls if you're all ready let's go let's go do this what's this next round we're gonna find out right now what's this next round and there you have it mocus the quizando gods have given it to you a quick math quiz so this is time to get to use your mind and get the answer correct. So quick math's coming up. First question is coming up right now. So get ready, boys and girls. It's asking this. What is 11 plus brackets 10 times 5? I'm done. I, like, I, I was done right away. This, this is, it, I will love to play this sort of thing because this is like sort of my domain. So yes, it is 61 is the correct answer. How many of you are swearing right now? How many are you loving this? We're going to find out. And Miles Cyril jumped up. He is super quick in math with 77,758 points. Uh, rounding out the top 10, the 3 to 1 adds up Chemical Stra, uh, Chris A98, Mikhail, Matt, Nick Perot, Urban Sobrero, Lisam, and G2G6, our resident robot uh, in the house. And 19 of you answered correctly three of you thought it was 51 and some of you just didn't bother that's fine so let's go there were some strange figures on screen <laughs> you're funny nick you're funny sometimes you get me worried but you're funny moving on quick maths next question coming up now and the next question is the following Do -do -do -do. what is the symbol for pi what is the symbol for pi? Hmm. If you go back to your maths class, what is the symbol for pi? And you should know it's number two. If you don't, well, tough, because you got that wrong. How many of you got it correct? I hope all of you did, and I hope all of you jumped on it like a big jumping thing. Chemic, chemic jumped on it like there was no tomorrow. Uh, did everybody get it correct? Yes. So, oh, one person answered omega sign. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now I have to put your hand up here. Who answered the omega sign there? Who answered that omega sign? Was that like a slip of the finger? Or did you really think the omega? It's not a two. <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's all good, wow bagger. Don't worry. Um, gentle right. Gentle Bensby. Uh, two is not the symbol for pi. No, the symbol for pi is... is it's, it, it, that's an emoji, isn't it? It's like a pie emoji. Um, moving on very quickly. How many seconds are there in 10 minutes? How many seconds are there in 10 minutes? Come on, you know this one. The answer is obviously 600. You should have jumped. You all should be waiting. I'm, I'm expecting like super fast scores on these ones. 
And uh, top spot over there. This is just this is rap random random how quickly things are moving. Chris eighty nine in top place. Jet moving up three. Welcome to the top ten. Bill Bear with G two G six moving up one space and Mocus moving up. Okay, good thing that we got you that thing and you're in the top ten because otherwise I would be very annoyed, Mocus. Moving on, let's go to the next quick maths question. Next one is the following. 14 get off a train at the first stop and 22 get on. There are now 51 people. How many of them started on the train? 14 get off the train at the first stop and 22 get uh, people get on. There are now 51 people. How many started on the train? And it is 43. Yes, lots to consume in a couple of seconds. And this is where we start separating our math geniuses uh, from the lot. How many did you get that correct? Only five of you got that correct. Urban Sombrero, A, Chris A89, Jet Mocus, and Miles Searle. Okay. Yes, no, there are a lot of numbers in this one. You did not get off the train. You just kept going all the way to Southampton, didn't you? Funny story. That happened to me. Too many letters. <laughs> yes, that question was that question was a toughie over there. Um, but it, it works your brain. I actually, um, over there... It, yeah, it's it's a complete that this. I know it's the last round. Probably should have come as a first round question, but hey, we're go, we're gonna go through six questions to go. Next one coming up. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Next one is the following. Which of these numbers is a multiple of three? Twenty nine, twenty six, twenty seven, forty four. Which of these is a multiple of three? See, that was easy. So there we are. Multiple of three, obviously, it is 27, which is uh, nine times three. And uh, top five in the leaderboard stay exactly the same with Matt joining us in the top ten. Congratulations, guys. Moving on straight to the next question with five to go. And this next question is asking the following. What is five times brackets, brackets, seven minus four, close brackets, divided by two, close brackets? Seven point five is the answer, but did you get that? That's the question. How many of you got that one? Let's see what's happening over here. So Jet over there moving up to the second. Pl oh no, staying st safe in second place. Miles Cyril moving up one. Mocha's moving up two places, and Bill Bear moving back into the top ten. Sixteen of you got that correct. A couple of you thought it was six point two five, and one of you thought it was five point six six. But no, you got it correct. You're still blocked. Don't worry, maths is not everybody's thing. I mean, what they say is there's people who have numbers, I think that's left left side and then right side is uh, is words or vice versa. Um, so yeah, it's not, it's not everybody's uh, cup of tea, but we have a lot of questions that have to do with facts, don't we? West side, west side, yo. West side, east side, here we go with the next question. Next question coming up now and it's asking, if it is two hours later, then it will take half as much time till midnight as it would be if it were an hour later. What time is it? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Lots of words to handle in that one. But Urban Sombrero combated those words. He saw what was happening and moved up six places to the top spot. Nick Perot, for someone who's uh, not liking all these numbers, moved up five places with that one to third place. And Matt moved into the top ten. So, seven of you got that correct with the rest of you getting that one wrong. I looked at the clock. It was nine o'clock. You just went for that. Fair enough. <laughs> Love math, but wasn't even able to process the question. I know. It, it, some, of, some of these are hard in, 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 in short time. I thought I had asked, what's the time? <laughs> oh, funny, funny, Nick. So, let's go to the next one. Three to go, and then we'll take a look at the overall leaderboard before we close this off. So, how many sides are there on a dokijan? A dodekijan? I can't even say that. How many? Uh, yeah, how many sides are on that? Dode, I would say 16 or 12. I, I don't know what that is. What the hell is a dode? 
<laughs> Let's see how many of you do that. So, uh, Nick moving up one place. Mario Cero moving up two. Kevin Costra, uh, Strafe moving back into the top ten. Twenty of you do that, so good stuff on you. Eighteen. Uh, some of you thought it was eighteen. Some of you thought it was, one of you thought it was four fourteen. I wouldn't have got that correct. So all of you who got, thought that was twelve, good stuff. I want to just take a look at the question because I want to see what that is. So, dude. I just want to see what... The, oh, that's a rather boring shape. Okay. I thought it was more interesting somehow. Okay, Mela, we have two questions to go. A polygon with 12... Yeah, yeah, I, I figured as much. But I thought it was just a different side. Um, so, we have two questions to go. Overall leaderboard is looking like this. Jet with 1,000, sorry, 171,195 points. Chris in second place with 149,875 points. Bill Bear right behind him with 145,924 points. The next two questions could be very important because even Strafe is right there with 144,413 points. It is very tight at the top. In fact, it's, it's tight. It's tight everywhere from two till two, down, even down to 10. Anyone, anything can happen in this. So guys, get ready. Last two questions could be very important. Rubbish shape. That's why we hate. Yes. That's. <laughs> yes, let's throw lots of hate towards the, the, I can't, the, the, the word I can't say. <laughs> Moving on. Two questions to go. Let's go with this next math question. Get your brains ready. It's coming up right now. And the question is, your restaurant bill comes to 127 and you decide to give a 15% tip. What is the total of your bill? 15% tip of 127. If you answered 146.05, you are correct. Good stuff, guys. How many of you did, though? That's the question. So, that one there took Chris to the top spot with Urban Sombrero moving down one. Matt moving up six places in the round. None of you got that correct. Congrats to Nick Perot, Wowbagger Kemic, Miles Shaggy, American Idiot, Chris, Matt, and Don Ho. I love Don Ho. Too late to have some points. Sh shapiest Bendel <laughs> He is shapist. You are shapist. At least he's not anything else. So, final question. Are you ready for this? Doom, 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 doom. Are you guys ready for this? So, final question coming up right now. This is going to decide all the positions because I can tell you the leaderboard, the overall leaderboard is still shaking it up. In fact, that last one took Matt into third place. What's going to happen in the overall? Well, last question coming up right now, guys. Here we go. Three, two, one. Here comes the last question. And the last question is this. Open brackets 3x, x times 20, x5 equals 150.x equals. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. 0 0.5. There you are. So there was some uh, quick algebra for you. And Jet got that one, taking her up to first place. Jet, congratulations, or him up to first place. Chris A86 in second place, and Urban Sombrero in third. But that was for the round. Who's the overall winner? It's coming up right now. Our overall winner in the quick maths quiz. Uh, sorry, the, the entire quiz is Jet in first place. Congratulations with those amazing points. Chris A98 and Billy Bear in third place. Congratulations, guys. How are you feeling after that? I'll just read out the entire leaderboard. Um, can I show it? Congratulations, Jet, for winning that. So the entire leaderboard looks like this for the overall. Jet in first place. Chris A89 and Billy Bear in third place. Matt in fourth place. Uh, Strafe. Congratulations. In fifth place, Wowbagger. In sixth place, Mikhail, 1963. In seventh place, Lashheads. Congratulations on your fourth place win. On your eighth place win. Mick Perot in ninth place. And Urban Sombrero in tenth. So congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. I hope you had a wonderful time. I hope the maths didn't fry your brain. And I hope to see you again next Wednesday for another quiz. And that you join in on all our other quizzes on Quizando. Remember, Monty's coming up tomorrow with a quiz about logos. Uh, Friday, there's some football. And next Monday, we have uh, Dale Collins back with two quizzes at 8 and 9 p.m. 
UK time or 9 to 10 p.m. European time. Take care. Thank you very much, Pentel J. I hope you had a wonderful time. Do tell your friends. Let's this community grow and let's grow it together. And if you do have any suggestions, you can always catch me on my Twitter. It's at Sir West. I'm going to write it over here in the chat at Sir West. Catch me over there. Do follow me over there. Or if you're on Clubhouse, you can ch catch me out uh, in one of the various different rooms on Clubhouse. Same handle for everything I use. So hope to see you all very, very soon. Thanks for those who are watching on the Quizando socials. If you do have a question or whatever, do reach out. Have yourselves a great guy. Send congrats to the football guy on Friday. I will. I will send a congrats to, to Barry. I'll let him know. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Aus Wiedersehen.